It is time for a new exclusive secret pack leak. You know that my leaks for the past many months have been 100% true, so I got more leaks for you in today's video and in today's stream, I'm gonna be leaking even more. So if you wanna get to it before it comes out on YouTube, I'm gonna be leaking one up to potentially two new deck types of the new selection pack. We're also having a new ban list, the new one that was just announced this week. We are abiding by it fully in a $2,000 tournament qualifier happening on twitch.tv slash decade so make sure you show up to that now what is this in the background how does it coincide with the secret pack leak i'm giving you today well an incident happened at this grand finale and it happens to coincide with the secret pack that i am unveiling so let's get set up with this and i'm going to show you what you are going to be expecting from the secret pack which by the way this deck type is get getting new support in the selection pack and it's getting a secret pack i would hope is happening at the same time i don't think konami would release it afterward or even before so at the same time there should be a secret pack supporting this deck type receiving new support unless konami might be baiting my source who knows now let's get right into this oh boy oh boy Secret packs have been a really good thing for the game, a good way to get the cards you want for cheap. And if you didn't know, selection packs are limited time. They go away after a while. So if you wanted a deck like Dynamorphia right now, too bad. <laughs> so if we got new Dynamorphia cards, beginning of turmoil is where most of the, look at this, it, even Invincible Raid. It's across multiple different selection packs, so you totally get screwed here. And uh, if you're thinking that uh, the Dynamorphia is getting support right now, you're wrong. I'm just talking about this as an example of how important secret packs are. So, Konami's new strategy is to not just put the all of the reprints in the selection pack itself, which, again, even if you reprint print in a selection pack, it's still limited time. Secret packs are forever. And for example, if you don't know how to unlock a secret pack, which if they unveil these secret packs in the shop, I do think they're going to be unlockable for everyone within a good long duration. But otherwise, to unlock a secret pack, the best way, you either randomly pull a card of the secret pack, then it unlocks it. Otherwise, you just craft one of the super rare cards from the secret pack, and then it's unlocked for about 24 hours. Now, this incident is between Cash Tira and Labyrinth. And I'm going to tell you right now, the secret pack that I'm unveiling is, let me go back to where the top deck, top cards page here, where I have the ultra rare filter and the super rare filter to let you know that this is all being reprinted in the secret pack. And don't worry, we're going to be skipping around this to get to the incident. We're not watching the full video on times two. Lovely Labyrinth is not only getting reprinted in the selection pack, but is also in the secret pack. But the deck normally plays one. But if you love Lovely, you're going to want a royal version of her. So you're going to have multiple opportunities pulling from the secret pack and the selection pack to ensure that you get a glossier royal version of the Lovely Labyrinth. Also, Welcome Labyrinth is going to be the two to three of You know, someone might be going crazy. What the heck? What do you mean two? Some TCG decks are playing two. I will be playing three. I like three. And all these super rares also, they will be reprinted. Also, Ghastly Glitch, I, don't, I mean, do you even care about the super rares? I don't know what you all care about, you gotta tell me. This is getting, you know, it technically has the Labyrinth monsters on the card art, even though it doesn't say Labyrinth specifically on the card, this will be reprinted also. So now you know it's being reprinted, now you know the secret pack, and also, again, go to my twitch.tv slash DK right after this video, and we're gonna be doing new leaks. One leak, definitely, possibly, up to two new deck types right after this video. I gotta get ready for the second deck type if I'm even leaking it. And now, let's talk about what's going on in this duel. So I will pause real quick and then we're gonna be speeding up through this, don't worry. Now, the Cash Tira Field's got the Shangri and the Arise Heart. Those are the two boss monsters here. This nasty boss monster states that any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. And if you missed it, a D shifter was also activated. So uh, double banished. And it has another nasty effect besides every card being banished when sent to the graveyard, and that is if you 
How, well, let's skip to that part before that builds up to it. You have a once per turn effect. You could detach three materials to target a card in the field and banish it face down. The reason why I'm specifying that it has to detach three materials is because it has to build up to it. It's not right away like a normal exceed going to have its special effect, but it will very quickly get that effect because each time a card is banished, you can attach a banished card from either player's banished pile to this as a material. So just triple banishes on separate chain links and then you're good. Now, the Shang Ri is going to be locking up the back row or monster as long as this is face up. Anytime a card is banished face down from the opponent. So if they activate Pot of P or you activate one of your card effects to banish one of their cards face down, as they have already done, they're going to be locking up zones for each instance. And on the field, we also have Fenrir. Fenrir states that if your opponent activates a monster effect or if this declares an attack, you're going to target a face up card back row or monster banish a face down again triggering the shang ri and triggering the arise heart and then we also have unicorn if you activate a monster effect or this attacks they're going to look at your extra deck banish a card face down again triggering a bunch bunch of effects now it's also worth noting that the field spell if you activate a shang ri effect so if it gets triggered or you do it standby phase effect which is going to summon a cash tiro from the deck it's going to pop a card on the field. So that is even more disruption. And on the field is Cash Tira Birth. This card's kind of annoying to deal with. If your opponent activates a spell card, you can then target three cards in your opponent's graveyard and banish them face down. So lots of banishing face down, and we are building up towards the Arise Heart being able to quick effect, target a card in the field, and banish it face down whenever. Let's skip on through this and get to the good stuff and, uh, you know, hopefully to the incident soon. So now it's got the three materials. All right, we're going to keep on skipping. I don't want you to miss anything. we got Pot of P. Let's see what we are digging for. Let's keep on digging. All right. Okay, Super Poly. Ooh, big welcome labyrinth. Eradicator, which just got limited to one, <laughs> thanks to this deck. So Konami pretty much confirming our leak here. And he's thinking long and hard. What do we want here? Well, he decides to grab Super Poly. Super Poly is the way Cash Tira, it, you know, they're going to be triggering. You banish a card face down, so we're going to lock up your back row. Rise Heart's going to gain another material, and we're ready to banish a card face down. All right, let's go, let's go. And let's get Super Poly in. Let's Super Poly up a monster or two. Let's go. So right now he's thinking, he's thinking, he's thinking. Now, he can't really... He's setting up a dark monster because a uh, double dark, he's going to be able to fuse with that. He's setting two back row first, though, which uh, is quite interesting. Why set two back row and then summon? to do your super poly play. I, I think he's trying to bluff that his super poly is actually set. It, and maybe he was second guessing that he was gonna like set this then end his turn. And then he's like, oh wait, no, I wanna summon the Ariana. I don't know. But because he's activating the uh, monster effect of the Ariana to search for a labyrinth card, that's gonna trigger banish the Ariana and trigger banish a card from the extra deck. We're gonna chain that super poly to the targeting banish. So discarding a card, it doesn't have to go to the graveyard, so that's okay. Using with the Arise Heart to make the Starving Venom. So let's bring up Starving Venom real quick. Starving Venom. And we just got Super Poly at three. Starving Venom on Fusion Summon, gain attack equal to one of the opponent's special zone monsters. And also you could target a level five or higher monster, gain its effects. And if this Fusion Summon card is destroyed, you can destroy all special zone monsters your opponent controls. Because another card was banished face down as he banished a card from the extra deck. We now have three back row locked up. And that triggered the field spell to pop a card. So what was... This is very interesting, actually. I don't... Would you say that he made a mistake by setting his back row and then putting himself in a position where the field spell would be triggered to pop a card? Or did he make his opponent misplay because his opponent did not pop the Starving Venom and now the Starving Venom, I think, is going to deal with the Shang-Ri. What are you doing? But, you know, he did pop a Gozen match, so, you know, you want to deal with the Floodgate cards also. Quite interesting. You didn't... Oh, well, the, oh, you know, here's the thing. Oh, wow, 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 let, me, let me change my mind. What the heck? If this fusion summon card is destroyed, you destroy all your opponent's special and monsters. Wouldn't you want that to happen? Okay, so I, I think he misplayed. Why'd he set two back row? That was just not good. Whoa, hold on, hold on. I changed my mind again. I changed my mind again. Shangri's got an effect. It states that if 
a, if this card in the field would be destroyed, you could detach a material from it instead. So did he actually make a mistake? Did he actually trick him into, but you know, maybe he wouldn't want to lose his other cash tier of monsters. I think it's quite interesting doing the set. I, I don't really understand that too much. That was really weird. Yeah, what the heck? Okay. And also, if he did not trigger his effects, he could have used the Arise Heart to banish a back row card. And then he chains the Super Poly. And, and then you lose your back row card. Uh, you lose both your back row cards of the field spell and the Arise Heart. So I'm sorry I'm going so deep into this. I just think setting these cards was not a good idea. And you could try to prove me wrong in the, in the comments. Yeah. And he's reading right now the other effect. Some would say the secret effect. The one that he's targeting a level 5 or higher monster, your point controls. He stole the Fenrir effect, and he's banishing the Shangri on the attack. <laughs> oh my Jesus. He didn't know. He did not know. And if he would have just destroyed the Starving Venom, he would have protected himself from destruction. Oh my Jesus. No way. Ain't no way. We're now under Gozen match, and he's locked under wind. And also, because he activated the Ariana this turn, he could special summon his Lady Labyrinth. The Lady Labyrinth being all the way down here. If a Labyrinth card was activated or effect, you could then special summon this card from your hand. And when a normal trap is activated, which the Gozen is not normal, it's going to be able to set a normal trap with a different name from your deck. So otherwise, it is 2,900 defense, and it cannot be targeted or be destroyed by card effects. So how do you deal with it? With a set back row. It, only if you have a set back row. If you attack into it with the Fen rear, it does target. So target a face up, can't target. You can't even target the face down back row, which is making it indestructible, uh, untargetable, by the way. And this is a good play. Draco Sack, two wins into a win monster. The Draco Sack could sack itself to then pop a card in the field. So he can get rid of the Gozen match here. He could get, and I don't think the starting Venom is really a problem. Or he can get rid of the set card, which is giving the lady all that protection. Goes for the back row. And it's a chainable card. Oh no, he should have went for the Gozen match, I'm thinking. Big Welcome is going to special summon a la Labyrinth monster onto the field. And then return a monster you control back to your hand. Now, you may have just saw a Compulse, which is going to spin a card, a monster on the field back to the hand. That was the lady using her effect, chaining to the welcome, Big Welcome Labyrinth, which you could chain link block, by the way. So if he had any effect to chain to the Big Welcome Labyrinth, that would have blocked off the lady from setting a free Compulse which cannot be used this turn. Now, what's crazy here is by summoning the lovely Labyrinth onto the field, then returning another monster you control back to your hand that's not the lovely, that's going to trigger her effect. She can now pop a card on the field or in the hand, and it's non-targeting. Non-target poppage. And, and she's dark, so that works under Goza match. We're going for the hand. We're going for the hand. Taking out a Fenrir. Oh, that, they're going nuts because... That could special summon onto an open field, and then it could declare an attack and banish any monster or even the Goza match off the field. That is devastating. Holy moly. But uh, not the incident. The incident. You'll know when the incident happens. So he's thinking about what to banish. He's looking through his six cards. Let's uh, pause. Okay, terraforming is going to be able to search him another Fenrir because the field spell is very similar to the uh, tier limit. Tier limit field spell that searches and also pops cards on the field. And um, I guess he he's putting it in the graveyard instead of, you know, putting it over the one he already has in the field just to, you know, like kind of like a skip step uh, that they both agree on. That's fine. All right, we got the Fenrir. Fenrir is here, and Fenrir can search for any cash tier monster from your deck. Now, the birth on the field allows you to perform a normal summon without tributing. So this is the special summon, and then he can now normal summon. Now, he searched for a scare claw, which he cannot summon under Goza match. He's locked into dark. Uh, no, earth, actually. Wait, he can summon it. He can. Correction. They're both earth. I was thinking Fenrir. He's scooping. He scooped it up. Now, the scare claw cash tier, what it states is that if this card battles a monster, the monster is negated until the end of the turn, which, and it battles using its defense, which, you know, I, I guess he was in uh, kind of trouble, he, you know, yeah, he's just scooping it up. He knows he's done. All right, let's hop on the next duel. Let's go, let's go. 
This is cast and everything in German, so I, don't, I, don't, I have not been paying attention to the captions. So if you are German, have these been good or are these being comical? You tell me. Let's skip the side deck and let's get through all that nonsense. Now, a, a big question you could have is, you want the Labyrinth player's deck list, right? The mad lad has not shared his deck list. Th this was five days ago? I, ca I can't find it. It's nowhere. Well, what is going on? What kind of tournament coverage is this where we don't have deck lists for the winning uh, players or top two or grand for top eight? What the heck is going on? All right, let's keep on skipping. All right, we good. Ooh. Okay, I, this is interesting. How could this be interesting? One set card? Yeah, set five is their best play. Well, Cash Tira chose for the Labyrinth player to go first. What the heck? <laughs> they, he wanted him to set five, set five floodgates, and then uh, he gets to go? Well, uh, you know, I guess he was hoping you'd have a monster on the field because then, you know, uh, I don't know. It does not really matter. You don't have to, It's not like a cyber dragon. You could just, uh, I, I guess he wants to try to, to remove, play for uh, turn two instead. Maybe he's got lightning storms and evenly matches, and that's going to be his main way to deal with the floodgates. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, he's like a, oh, I don't know, like setting up a Rise Harp, being able to banish on their turn before the cards activate, and the Shang Re trigger with the field spell popping back row. Kind of interesting. Cosmic, so he is going to be summoning the lady, then returning the lady back to the hand, which now the lady could be special summoned onto the field whenever. So the lady will not be indestructible or untargetable because there's no set cards that you control. And it's only set cards that you control, not your opponent. It, while you control a set card. So it's going to be like a hand trap. Special summon, 3,000 attack, or 2,900 defense. It, but this summons into defense only, 2,900 defense. So you know that's coming. All right, uh, let's see if we could speed up a little bit through here. Special summon the Fen Rear, not using up the normal summon. Okay, that's going to target your Cash Tira, summon one from the deck with a different attribute. Unicorns are now going to be searching for a Cash Tira spell. The Birth, okay, Birth is good for a normal summon without tributing. And it could also special summon a Banish or Engrave Cash Tira. We're going to be summoning our uh, Rise Heart, Cash Tira Rise Heart. So if you control Cash Tira, this is a special summon. You got the Shang Ri. Now, uh, this is like one of the most over convoluted mechanics I've ever seen in a Yu Gi Oh deck. I can't freaking believe this. I if you don't know what Cash Tiras do, <laughs> then let me tell you this real quick. The Cash Tira Rise Heart is banishing a Big Bang from the deck, and then it's targeting your Cash Tira Exceed, and you are going to then add a Cash Tira attached to the Shang Ri to your hand, and then you could special summon that monster from your hand. What the heck? Banish from the deck, summon uh, back to the hand, then onto the fields. Uh, wild. Okay, we're going to lock up the back row. Very good. And he's targeting. He's thinking about what card to add back to the hand. And then special summon, that is. Okay, uh, what happened here is he used the field spell to pop his own monster. And by popping his own monster, he protects himself by detaching. And that's a combo you're going to be learning you know, right here for the first time, if not, if you've never heard of this, because you're going to be using this in Master Duel, definitely. The birth is going to reborn that monster in the graveyard now. So do remember to pop your own monster, which tier limits have been making plays like that also. Popping their own uh, tier limits to fuse and or the big fusion, Kaleido Heart. So same thing. All right, all right. So what are we waiting for? And the Shangri in attack position is zero attack. But we can make the Arise Heart. Exceed by using a cast your monster control if you activated the Shangri this turn. So over any of your monsters. Well, do it over the zero attack. Let's go. 15, 3,000, 24. 25. Now, the Arise Heart is not going to be able to deal with the Lady that he could special summon from the hand. But the, the Fen Rear is going to. So the Fen Rear, when the Fen Rear declares the attack, it's going to be able to banish the Lady. So he's got to carefully, I mean, I, there was no way to play around this. He'd have to summon it after the Fen Rear attack. So he'd have to make a massive misplay 
which is not going to happen. And, it, you know, it actually doesn't even matter because this states if your opponent activates a monster effect. So what's going to happen is they're going to activate the lady, special summon it, and then the Fenrir is going to trigger and banish it anyway. So <laughs> what are you going to do? You'd have to have a set card to make it so this couldn't be targeted. And that's lethal damage. All right, let's go to game three. The incident. The incident is happening here. So many people were adding me and messaging me to, to watch this, especially after my banless reaction. Oh my, oh my. Let's skip on through. Look at that, side decking. And uh, you may be thinking, they already side decked. Why side deck again? Well, you pretty much have a good idea on who, who's going to go first or second, which, uh, you know, the nuance is you're not supposed to tell your opponent who's going first or second until after side decking, but you pretty much know. And you would possibly change your side deck up knowing if you're going first or second. Side in Psalm Judgments knowing you're going first. Side out the Lightning Storms, for example. All right, let's go, let's go. Wow, wow. Good sportsmanship. Ariana gonna get searching. We search in, and that's gonna make it so the lady is activatable. Very nice. Set five. <laughs> See, I I don't understand why. Is someone explain this to me? Why did Cash Tira choose to go second for game two? I mean, well, you saw it already. He one turn killed. I guess you're right. But like this also happens. Jeez. Big welcome. Summon a labyrinth from the deck, then return a monster control back to your hand. Lady, then return your monster, which will trigger the lady to pop a card in the hand. I did show this in my selection pack demonstration that you could do this. Chaining Eradicator. He's going to chain Cosmic Cyclone, so Eradicator is going to be looking at the hand and destroying all copies of Spell or Trap, whatever you declared. So before the Cosmic Cyclone gets deleted, we know that he called Spell. So he's going to be activating that before that happens. Okay. He let it resolve. That's it. If you let it resolve, you're not adding any more cards to this chain. Let's resolve it. So, uh, you know, let's count. How many cards are in your hand going second, right? You have... The one Cosmic Cyclone plus five other cards, all right? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. He's only got one card left. One card left. That is five cards ripped from the hand, deleted, destroyed. And the next three turns, you're going to destroy a spell card that they are drawing. If there's going to even be three more turns after this, this is what many people believe the main reason. They think that Japan was watching this and they were like, oh no, this is crazy. We can't allow this to be at three, even though I'm confident he's probably playing only one because the lady gets to basically search and set it anyway. Wow. Wow. But uh, to be fair, he did not search it. He just opened it. And maybe that would influence a lot of players to want to be playing uh, more than one copy and would be really toxic for the latter. So even if we were to argue that it would be bad to play more than one, we do not want that toxicity on the ladder. Can you agree with that? <laughs> and he is reminding him, hello, I, you know, I didn't really catch it myself. I, maybe he verbally said it. He is triggering the lady on chain link one. You don't get to choose. It is a trigger effect. Chain link to the eradicator. So eradicator, you're going to stack it from top to bottom. The top of the stack is going to be the eradicator deleting all spells. And then the lady with the final card in the hand is going to destroy it all during the draw phase. All six cards. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. All he could do is chain cosmic. Oh, look at that face. <laughs> Listen, Tom K, am I allowed to use this face as an emote? Uh, please. Okay, I'm going to screenshot this right now. Let me yoink it. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, my. This is... <laughs> Oh my. The crowd goes wild. It's always funny. You know, we all hate toxic strategies and floodgates. So I think, you know, they're being ironic on purpose, I'd say, where they're celebrating and going nuts and going, oh my Jesus. 
a floodgate won it all or a toxic card like eradicate every time a floodgates flipped up in a tcg tournament the crowd does go wild oh my I, I guess it's also fun just you know seeing a pro player get screwed by a card that they get screwed by when they're regularly playing so it's really relatable in that sense and it, it's just something you gotta laugh about and even cheer so I, I don't know what else happens here do they pan over the crowd uh, it, or what's going on i'll just play out to the end of this all right very good very good <laughs> yes we all love eradicator now it, it is worth noting that cash tira is the villain they were the labyrinth deck went into this top two as the underdog so that's probably another big reason why they will be cheering for labyrinth to be winning here more so than the eradicator all right very good now uh, this mad lad's got a lot of tops a very consistent ycs player i think this is the first time he topped with labyrinth though and i think this is the first big event since the ban list they just had all right beautiful 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 i don't know if this is going to be even be doing this accurately but thank you very much for watching let me know if you enjoyed that quick little recap and all that good stuff and the main takeaway from the video is that the labyrinth secret pack is coming all right so i'll see you on twitch.tv slash decade for more good stuff 2000 tournament new ban list and new leaks we are out